best tech men, best tech men. What do you think? So best tech men is part of best tech. I know that was a jump. That was a mental jump, wasn't it? It's like best tech men. I think I've heard a name. Seems familiar. Okay. Uh, you know how many millions they paid that Wall Street marketing firm to come out with this name? No, no, no. How many Budweiser's or Chinese equivalent Budweiser's, Ching Chow or Sing Chow? Sing Chow? Is that how you name it? Whatever. I drank a bunch of that at a party about 15 years ago. Woo! It's actually pretty good beer. Okay, let's just talk about the best tech men. Okay, 14C, 28N. Best Tech has a line of knives that is Best Techman knives. And it's a satin blade, which means I've just smeared it up. There it is. G10. They're going to be more price sensitive. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, We Knives has Civivi, but Civivi, under Civivi is Sendcut. So we're trying to hold the line here. So then I guess it gives permission for the other lines to go up when we have one that's going to stay put, or try to stay put. And what is this? It's 51 Smackers, the best Tagman Ronin. Um, but here's the thing. Uh... If you get it on White Mountain, because I got a discount code, right? LTK. So what's five dollars and ten cents off of that? So now you are in send cut territory at the forty-five, forty-six dollar range, and these guys don't charge tax or shipping in the US. So I mean that's a true real forty-five dollar knife delivered. Almost eight inches. Okay, three and a quarter, we'll measure it out and see OD green, but you can get it in different colors. And who is the famous designer? Uh, yeah, like nobody. Okay, 4.37 ounces. What do you think, Laconico? You ain't getting Laconico for 45 bucks. Well, you, you can get Laconico for 65, uh, the Sokoki, but okay. Um, <clears throat> I, why did I say that? Um, Best Techman, Ronin. You can get it in, I got the green, but you can get whatever. Natural G10, orange. You want a silver blade. You want a black blade. You want an everything blade. Whatever. You can get it. Okay, so there's your paperwork. Um, yeah, I thought, well, I got the Dundee. Okay, and then this was white. This was white. So it didn't stay white for long, did it? But I threw it in the green, and I got kind of funny coloration on this one when I when I uh, dyed it. But then again, do I care? No, because it's a forty-something dollar shooter, and this one is nice. I like this Dundee, and I've so I've you know dragged this around and used it and used it and used it and. Uh, Let's see, it could use a little help there on the edge, yeah. Okay, so, now let's go ahead and trash this one, right? So, the Ronin is now in my possession, and yeah, that feels much better, actually. So, let's get a piece of paper. Let's not brag about the Dundee. I think the Dundee is done for the day. Okay, you gotta touch the paper first. Okay. Um, let me think. Yeah, it's not scary sharp. Um, it's about a standard, standard factory edge, I'd say. Not nothing to write home about, but it's about that, or maybe just a little under the standard factory edge. Doesn't seem quite as sharp, but. Um, It'd be easy to tune this one up. Just put it on the strop and bring it out. Um, three and a quarter inch blade, supposedly. So let's check that out and see if that's going to be for true. 
Well, there's three and a half down here, and that's three and a quarter all day long, really 3.3 3 at about 85, 86 millimeters. Uh, seven and three quarter, and then add another sixteenth onto it, right? So seven point eight, maybe. At uh, coming up on twenty centimeters. Okay, so it's not, it's not tiny, that's for sure. And you know what? It feels pretty robust. These liners are not nested, so they're out, and they're probably one and a half millimeter thick liners, steel liners here. And then you've got this, whatever they want to call it, axis lock, uh, piston lock, slide lock, whatever. But I like these kinds of locks because the front and the back look the same. Nice G10. And yes, it's not super lightweight. It feels robust in the hand. It really does. This is not super thin either. Let's put this down on here. Nah, nah, I was going, it ain't no 99 grams, that's for sure. No, it isn't. It's 123 grams, and if we run it back around to ounces, okay, 4.35, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's all there. And let's see how thick this thing really is, because it's definitely thicker than a PM2. Oh, yeah, 14.5 millimeters. Oh, yeah, 5.57 of an inch. So this is, uh, uh, well, 0.46 is a PM2. So just think, yeah, that's that's some stuff. Um, 0.13, so 3.3 millimeters. So blade stock's not, you know, as thin as a lot are these days a lot of it, it's three millimeter so this is heavier than that and then this is coming up on six tenths of an inch that's 5.5 that is uh or 0.57 of an inch that's that's pretty significant so this is pretty robust in the hand although the ergos are good the ergos are good okay reverse grip that feels good Where's my balance? That's easy to find. Okay. Fidget friendly. Well, you can you can finger flick it if you can flick all the way. And of course, let's pull this and let it drop. Okay. Because we've got Omega Springs here, right? Okay. Okay. So you can, and you can slap your camera stand with that too. Okay. But you can open, close like that just with this so it's it's like an axis lock thing um you can roll it open you can flick it open if you want uh those omega springs are pretty they're pretty secure on there they ain't letting you get away with much are they uh see i mean there's that not that there wouldn't be bearings on here because you can tell there are but i mean as long as you keep this pulled back you can do anything you want but once you try and just flick it forward to try and get out of the grasp of the Omega Springs, it's not going to be easy. Like that? Nope. Not going to let you. There you go. you got to give it a little wrist on there, too. But regardless, and you got this cutaway here, so really piercing, slicing shouldn't be a problem. It should be a pretty good utility kind of all-purpose blade. Um, so, you know, I've been watching this Best Techman thing, so I'm going to keep an eye on it because I really like the Dundee. And take a look at the Dundee versus the Ronin. Yeah, and you know what? Let's, let's, let's throw this on here. Yeah, the Dundee is lighter. The Dundee is thinner. The Dundee is not an access lock and it it's really fidget friendly and it drops so freely and it's a flipper okay so i was pretty impressed with this but really finger flicking the dundee a little bit more of a chore you know why because this just slides all the way in here it's really difficult to get a finger in here 
and really the detent's pretty solid. So really, you're not a finger flicking guy on this one so much. It's the flipper tab, but this, you know, if you haven't got the Dundee, you might want to consider it. It is right and left hand. Deep carry. And the screws are flat there, so they're tapered. Open design. I like it. I like it. It's slender. I think the blade's longer. Because I kept thinking this was more of... And where did I just throw my tape measure? Here it is. So that one, 3.3 supposedly. See, this is a little longer. This is a little longer and overall 8 inches. Okay. But definitely lighter. And you can tell it. And definitely thinner. So if you want something lighter, thinner, longer. And a flipper as opposed to, you know. So I don't know. I mean, it's really hard to contrast between these two. I mean, to compare because they're such different knives. Okay. But this one is just, I mean, it just drops. It just, of course, I've had it apart to, you know, do my really bad dye job that I got some kind of, I don't know what that was. But, uh, yeah, they're both green now at least. Um, but this one is contoured and it's definitely thicker, heavier, more robust. Okay. But if you like this lock system better, then you're good with that. And of course, I let go too quick. Okay. But it's one of those timing things with the, with the slide lock. That kind of thing. But, you know, it, this is not as long, but it's heavier. So, was this a move up? It's kind of more of a complete knife because of the contouring. It feels tough. It feels like a full G10 Best Tech knife is what it feels like. This one, not so much. It does feel a little more fragile because it's thinner, lighter, etc. So there's those two. So this is one of those things, I guess, that's just a personal preference. And I, li I like them both for what they are. So, yeah, I'll, I'll see going forward, but I, I'm going to try and get my hands on every new Best Techman model. First of all, they're not very expensive. And second of all, they're intriguing just to kind of see what they're going to do for the next one, you know? Just kind of fascinating in that regard. And let's at least pull one side open. You know, they don't make it available where you can unscrew it on both sides. Like the, like the Kaiser Escort when they did that with the adjustable uh, slide lock. Um, and this is not that because that would have been nice. The clutch lock on the Kaiser has an access. And so both these screws can pull out. And this makes it easier to disassemble, reassemble, in my, in my humble opinion. Because you ever try to do this? Ever tried to do the Benchmade access lock ones? Disassembly, reassembly? Not real easy because you don't you can't just unscrew this and then just have that tube across here that both ends can screw into that's better when you're doing these ambidextrous omega springs i mean in my opinion at least now we got number sixes which you know i don't think it cost extra if best tech would put number eights on the body um just i find it more helpful if they would um, that way you only have to use one bit to do the disassembly which would be nice and here we go pocket clip and uh, 
and less likelihood of failure, you know, a number six just is not quite as robust as a number eight. Okay, there's my pocket clip with screws. There's that. There's another body screw that did not come out completely. And will it now? Well, it will when I pull it out. Like that. Now it will. There you go. Didn't have much choice then. Okay, here we are, and here's our little carved out area for our slide lock, axis lock, whatever. And there's your omega spring. And the problem is then you got to push this through because you can't unscrew this. Um, but we do have a captured pivot here. So it's squared off there. So if you wanted to go through with it, just pop this omega spring off, you know, which is not difficult to do. And uh, you can just pop it off like this and then slide it off here. And of course you have a left and a right hand side. See how it's hooked in? So that's the back, that's the lock side or the non-presentation side. But the other side will, it'll the pin will go that way instead of this way as you understand how this has to go. So you've got two distinct different springs, okay, for the omega springs. And then it's completely skeletonized throughout. So you've got that for weight reduction, even though this is not an ultra lightweight, that's for sure. So, but, you know, in the clutch lock under with Kaiser, it's, it's available to where you can, you know, it has multiple holes where you can adjust the spring tension on the Omega spring. So uh, that's what they've done. And let's pop this back on. Well, I've got that planted in there. You know what? I don't know, but what that spring seems maybe a little bit more robust than some of the other Omega springs. It seems like it takes a little bit more to bend it into position. So maybe this thing is a little, I don't know, maybe it's got a little bit more guts to it. Maybe that's why that action tries to slow you down when you finger flick it too. I don't know. It just seems like that is a little tougher push to get that bent and pushed in there than normal Omega Springs um, that I've dealt with. Got like an automatic retraction, doesn't it? Pull this back and it just it just goes right back in place. Boom, just like that, doesn't it? Wow. So there's my Ronin all back together because we didn't take it all apart. Thank God. Uh, Omega spring knives. Uh, clutch lock with Kaiser, I can do. These are way more fidgety, but you get the point. All right, best techman, the Ronin. Yeah, let's see what comes, uh, what comes out later. Uh, I'm interested. Take care, my friends. We do love them knives. So you guys, stay sharp.